This is creation. It's all around us, and inside of creation, there's life. When we look at life, we can see that there is a creator. In fact, all creation has a creator. But it's common today that people deny their creator, even though the proof of our creator is all around us. Everybody, what do you see here? Without creation, life would be like this. And without a creator, life would exist like this. So today, through the creation, let us realize the existence of our creator God, our Elohim God, through the presentation, God, Elohim, the creator's signature. All creators have a signature. Their signature is their style. It's their pattern. It's what they intentionally put inside of the creation by their will. So if we come to think of it, engineers, Architects, artists, they all have a signature from their creation. Everybody, do you know this painting? And who painted the Mona Lisa? Let's take a look at the use of color, the expression on the face, even the dark background. If you notice about this, we'll realize Da Vinci has a style. Da Vinci has a pattern inside of his creation. Do you think Da Vinci painted this painting? Pattern is totally different. The style is different. Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso's style is abstract. It means he's not concerned with realism. He wants to paint to evoke an emotion. We can realize that Picasso has a completely different pattern than Da Vinci. This painting is called Starry Night. Do you think it was Da Vinci or Picasso when you look at the pattern? Because it's different. We can realize should be different creator. I think I heard it from somebody. The painter of this is Vincent Van Gogh. When you come to look at the pattern, we realize that Van Gogh uses a lot of color. He puts swirls all throughout the painting. It looks like a gust of wind went through it. And he's known for putting a lot of paint on the canvas. It's as if he took the tube of paint and just smeared it on the canvas. Everybody, who do you think is the creator of this painting? Right away. We can understand very clearly. In fact, when you look at the pattern, we clearly see who the creator is. When you look at this next painting, who would you say the creator is? Yeah, we'd say Van Gogh. Now, out of process of elimination, I think we should all get this last answer correct. But for the sake of the argument, let's look at the last painting. Who painted this? From the pattern, from the style, we clearly see that this is Da Vinci. The expression on the face, the use of the color, even the dark background, it clearly shows us Da Vinci painted this. But what about the true creator? the one who made the universe and the earth and all life in it, does that creator have a signature that we can recognize? According to the Bible, when we look at Romans chapter one, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. Put simply, if we study creation well, we will clearly know our creator. Then if we take a look at these Four next pictures, galaxy, leaves of a plant, even a human face, and the double helix, the DNA. What do these four pictures have in common with each other? At first, it's not easy. We, they seem to be unrelated when we first look at them. However, if we give a closer look, if we look deeply into the pattern, into the style, we realize there is something relating these four pictures. What's relating them? is the series of numbers you see right there called the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers found all throughout nature. It's defined as a series of numbers in which one of the numbers in the series is the sum of the two preceding numbers. Put simply, when you start with zero and one, if you add those series of numbers, you get the Fibonacci series. Zero plus one is one, one plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus two is five, 8, 13, 21. If you go on and on into infinity, these are the Fibonacci numbers. 
What's really amazing about the numbers is not just the series, it's the relationship between the numbers. When we find out, dividing the two numbers in series, you get what's called the golden ratio, and some who have even called the divine proportion. When you divide two numbers in the series, you get the number phi, which is 1.618 and on into infinity. So until now, unless you're really into math, this still sounds a little boring. What's the point? The point is, is that the golden ratio, 1.618, is found all throughout nature. The series of numbers is found all throughout nature. That's why throughout history, mathematicians, philosophers, scientists, they viewed nature and observed it and found this number, this golden ratio. What's important for us to realize is that the mathematicians and scientists, they didn't make the dimensions of the plants. They didn't make the golden ratio itself. They just observed what was already created. That means there is a creator that used this pattern. There's a creator that decided this is the style that I'm going to make the creation with. It means that the Fibonacci series, it is a signature of the creator. There's one more point we should realize about the Fibonacci numbers, and we'll move on. When you start plotting the Fibonacci numbers in a square, if you look close, you'll see it's the same numbers we just saw in the series. One, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, and 34. If you draw an arc between the squares and you connect all of them, you get the Fibonacci spiral. It's the Fibonacci series. It's the golden ratio. And it's the Fibonacci spiral that is the very creator, the very signature of our creator. So where can we find this pattern? Where can we find this style of the creator? Look no further than the human body. Our very bodies are the sign and signature of our creator. If you take the torso divided by the height of a person, we get 1.618 and very close since it's an irrational number. The three digits in your finger are in phi, the golden ratio. If you take the relationship of your hand to your forearm, we get the golden ratio and even the whole arm compared to the forearm is in this divine proportion, the golden ratio. In fact, knowing or not, we judge human beauty according to this ratio. When a human face is in the dimensions of the golden proportion, we say they're attractive, like a model. When our face is somewhat out of proportion, our eyes are too close together, our lips are too high up our face, we come to say that person is not so attractive. So some of you might be depressed right now, like as I am. But you can take heart. There's something about you that's beautifully in the golden ratio. Your DNA. The DNA inside of all of us also has the Fibonacci sequence, which is 21 angstroms wide and 34 angstroms long, according to each segment of the DNA. So if you're worried about your face, at least you can know your DNA is very beautiful. Then is it only the human body? All throughout nature, we come to continue to find this series. Here's the seed nubs of a pine cone. Why do the seed nubs of the pine cone grow eight spirals clockwise and 13 spirals counterclockwise? One of the most famous examples is the sunflower. If you viewed the face of the sunflower more closely, you'd see there's spirals all throughout the seeds. And if you took time to count the spirals, there'd be 21, 34, and 55. And even the very large sunflowers, amazingly, the next round of seeds grows in 89 rows of seeds, the very sequence of the Fibonacci numbers. In terms of biology, it turns out that growing this way according to the divine proportion, the golden ratio, maximizes the amount of seeds that can grow inside the sunflower. In other words, if it grew in any other way, there'd be empty gaps of seeds all over it. But since it grows in the divine proportion, there's not one empty space. Growing in the way the creator made maximizes the production of this plant. Pineapple is not without exception. Also, we find out so many plants also grow according to the divine number, the divine proportion, the Fibonacci sequence. They do it because maximizing water consumption, even sunlight, growing in this way, turns out makes life blossom. Then if we take a broader perspective, not just the plants, why is the twirl of a hurricane, this natural disaster, in the spiral of Fibonacci? If we take our mind even broader, the rings of Saturn. The rings of Saturn are space dust and rocks floating around the planet. But incredibly, these space dust and rocks 
are in the very sequence, the ratio of this divine proportion. And let's take our perspective even broader than this. Why is the very swirl of the galaxy twirling in the universe right now? Why is that also in the Fibonacci sequence? Who designed that this galaxy twirls in the same way as the hurricane? And this proportion, this ratio is also found in your body and in the nature, the plants of this earth. We should start considering about where does this come from? Amazingly, humans, we're hardwired already with the golden ratio since we're part of this creation. Since the creator put this sequence inside and we're a part of it, we can't help but be more appealing, more attracted to the golden ratio. That's why if you look at the logos that we had just now up on the screen, we can realize major companies, they put their logos inside the golden ratio so that when we view them, it's more appealing to our eye. The National Geographic, Toyota symbol, and the Pepsi circle, when we start analyzing them, Art designers put them inside this proportion. So when we view them, it's the most appealing and most comfortable. So we start begging the question, why are we drawn to this pattern among all creation? To answer that, we should consider who has dominion over the galaxy and the hurricane and the DNA at the same time. Who is the one who has authority only all, over all of these things? Could you please name one person that has authority over the design of the galaxy and the proportions of the double helix? Is there one scientist that can do it? I don't mean to keep begging the question, but it's important that we really understand this. The only one that has authority over these things is our God. There's no man that has authority over these things. Intuitively, all people should come to realize who is the only one that has control over the galaxy and the double helix that's inside of our body now. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 18. The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. As I just mentioned, intuitively, it's only God that can do all of these things. He's the only one that has dominion and authority over it. That's why when we come to look at the creation and we start understanding the pattern and the style, we don't need to see the words made by God. Everybody, did you need to see Picasso's name at the end of The Weeping Woman to know that it was a Picasso? You saw the pattern and you realized right away. You didn't need to see Da Vinci's name under the Mona Lisa. Right away through that style, that pattern, you knew it. And in the very same way, when we view creation under the leaf, we don't need to see made by God. On the double helix etched, made by God in heaven. We don't need to see that because the very creation itself it's screaming to us. It's speaking to us if you're willing to listen. In Psalm chapter 19, verse 1 through 4, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies announce what his hands have made. They have no speech or words. They have no voice to be heard. But their message goes out through all the world. Their words go everywhere on the earth. The creation doesn't need to say it, actually. Just by its existence, it's screaming to us. For those who are listening, you can clearly know who is the creator. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, we should be familiar because we saw this verse quite a few times today. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Our God is worthy for sure. But through this verse, we can be reminded again, why is our God worthy? Because our God made everything. And what did our God do? Our God put the will of God inside of everything. It means it's not a mistake. There is no accident in the creation. I don't know how much you followed art before, but actually Pablo Picasso was a fantastic artist that can draw realism very well. It wasn't because he had to draw disproportionate objects that he drew an abstract. He wanted his viewer not to see what their eyes always see. You can always see someone in real life I want to draw a painting that inspires emotion. In other words, it's the intentional style of the creator. That means when we find pattern in creation, we find the pattern in the galaxy and in nature and in the DNA, we also should realize this is not coincidence or mistake. This is not accident. This is something made, a pattern and a signature of our creator God. That in this age, fortunately for us, 
we get to know specifically who is that God. It's not enough for us to just acknowledge God alone. But in this age, we get to know who is the identity of this creator God. In Genesis chapter one, the story of creation, let's know the identity of this creator God. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creeping creatures that creep on the ground. Genesis chapter one is teaching us about the creator God, but the creator God in Genesis is Elohim. Then what is the identity of Elohim God? If we pay attention to verse 26, as we know well, then we can realize what is the identity of our creator. Elohim said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. That means the creator God, Was that God singular? It never was. The creator God was never singular because the creator God, Elohim said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Then what is the plural image of Elohim God? The very next verse, and Elohim created the man in his image. In the image of Elohim, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Who came first, mankind or Elohim God? Then the creator God was male and female. And from that creation came out human beings, male and female. Our almighty creator, Elohim God, made everything according to their will. And when we come to think of Elohim's image as male and female, we can easily put together through the Bible that the male image of God Almighty is our heavenly father, And the female image is our heavenly mother. In this age, we get to know our father and our mother who are the creators. That's why in this age, we should acknowledge our creator God. Incredibly, human beings, we have the very special privilege to say we are made in God's image. Even though the birds, the fish, the livestock, all was made by God, but none of them were made in the image of God. That's why the birds cannot study about the Fibonacci sequence. The livestock doesn't have the right to know about the swirl of the galaxy matching the swirl of the hurricane. Who is privileged to know that kind of information? Mankind who's made in the image of Elohim. And that's why through this presentation, there's a sincere hope that all people of the world, all 7 billion people will wake up, see the creation in front of them and acknowledge God exists. I would like to conclude this presentation of God, Elohim, the creator's signature.